We're going to open our day with Dr. Tom Lokensgaard, Dr. Axe. Is that right? Dr. Axe has named Dr. Lokensgar is one of the top 50 functional and integrative medical doctors, recognizing him as one of the leaders in natural dentistry. He is the author of Functional Dentistry and Integrative Medicine, along with two comprehensive programs, Oral Rejuvenation Biological Dentistry Program and the Age Rejuvenation Naturopathic Medicine Program, and his age management, guided wellness protocols and life enhancement therapies. With over 30 years of clinical experience, Dr. Lokensgaard has been a featured speaker and guest on numerous network and radio shows, lectures, articles, and webinars, including Health Awakening with host Scott Laird, naturopath, The High Wire with Del Bigtree, and Ty Bollinger and Charlene's The Truth About Cancer, A Global Quest. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Tom to come up here and take over. Thank you, Nick, and congratulations to you also. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming out to this morning. Um, I want to give, give a shout out to my staff. If you guys would stand up, okay? I have, thank you guys. I have one of the best staffs in the world that, that I've, I've been doing this for over 30 years, and, and these people are fantastic. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to the IABDM. Thank you for asking me to speak today. Um, and, uh, to, and, and, oh, is Toby here? To, I, heard Toby, I heard Toby was out dancing last night and he wrecked his knee or something. We have a video? Oh, maybe we can play that later. <laughs> maybe we can plug in to, uh, Toby. And, 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 so did you guys, who got the highest score last night bowling? I played pool. Oh, okay. All right, well. So people come to me and they ask me, they say, so what, what is holistic dentistry? And I tell them, well, it's basically, it's basically a, a clinic where people come with a whole list of problems. And, and so we, we get the train wrecks. You know, we, we get all the, the, the Lyme patients and the people with multiple chemical sensitivities and whatnot. But uh, uh, when I first moved down here 11 years ago with my wife, Jan, sitting right there, Hi, dear. Um, uh, people would say to me, you do what? What, what, is, what is biological dental? What does that mean? And, uh, and now it's become kind of a mecca. You mentioned Josh and Ty and, and Dell. although Dell doesn't live here, although he, I have to give a shout out to Dell too, because you have to hear Dell Bigtree today. The, the guy, he's an amazing speaker. He's got, he's got amazing passion and don't miss it. That's worth the price of admission right there, just, just to listen to Dell. And he's, he'll be flying in around 10 o'clock today. So anyway, I look at anything. I look at. I was trained as a traditional dentist, and I did the mercury, and I did the root canals, and you know, and I got really frustrated. I got I got really bored and frustrated with the drill, fill, and bill. And I said, "This is is this it? I mean, you know." I, and I I felt like I wasn't being able to help patients because patients would come in with multiple problems. And this was even you know, head back 30 years ago. And people would still have a lot of problems, and they'd, they'd have diabetes, and they'd have all these other issues, and I didn't know anything about that. And people would come in to me and say, well, is this connected to my, to my, to my pain in my back? And I go, I don't know. I don't think so. I doubt it. You know, I, I don't see how it could be. But fast forward, now I've, you know, we know more about the connections, and we know about the truth about dentistry. And, and the truth about dentistry is we've, we do some really cool things. We do some really great things. But we also do some pretty stupid things, I think. You know? and, and, and like we're the only profession that, that uh, keeps dead teeth in, in, in the mouth and keeps dead tissue in the body, which kind of makes no sense to me. But uh, at, at any rate, so I look at everything from uh, an anti-aging because I, I, I've been boarded by the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, and uh, I, I went to, when I, got, when I first kind of got bored with dentistry, I, uh, I went to school, I went back to school to get a naturopathic degree, which really kind of sparked me into, you know, doing, uh, becoming more interested in medical, dental type situations. And so then this young lady walks into my practice, who was my wife, and says, I don't want you giving the kids fluoride anymore. And I'm like, what? You're telling me? 
you don't want me to give them fluoride anymore? She goes, yeah, I've been reading Prevention Magazine, and I've been reading uh, Earl Mindell's Bible, you know, Vitamin Bible. And she says, no, I don't, I don't want you to give them you know, fluoride anymore. I'm like, well, who are you to, to be telling me? I'm the expert. And as it turns out, she's the, she was the expert. And as it turns out in your practices, the moms are the experts. The moms are very well connected. You know this as well as I do. So don't think that when, when moms come in there, and they're bringing their kids in, that they're, they're there to interview you, basically. And, you know, you're, you're kind of on trial until you pass the test. So anyway, so that's kind of how I look at everything from holistic, from a, from a naturopathic, from a biological dental, uh, and anti-aging uh, perspective. So I, today I kind of want to connect some of the dots. We've had some great speakers here. And I mean, I've really learned a lot. And every time I go to these conventions, I, I feel like I'm very inadequate now because I've learned so much. And I go, oh, OK, so where, how do I fit this all together? But uh, today I want I to um, uh, have you guys think more like an electrician, like Jerry Tennant would say. And you, I'm assuming that you all pretty much know who Jerry Tennant is. And I studied a lot of his work. And, and uh, I, I have a friend who used to work for him. And I've, I've heard him lecture. He, he's, he's written a book called uh, Healing is Voltage. And, and that's, I'm going to reference a lot of his slides. But I want to tie some things together, because we heard some talks on vitamin D3 yesterday that were really phenomenal. Dr. Hal did a great job on vitamins and minerals and whatever else. So I want to kind of connect the dots. But I want to look at dentistry and medicine from an anti-aging perspective. And some new things, some old things, some exciting things, some dull things. But, but we'll, we'll get through there. So anyway, um, so David, uh, fast forward, I just do this. Well, look at that. And it's even got the next slide for me. Th that's cool. Thank you. So open your heart and your mind, because living life as, as sheep is a fantastic way to get slaughtered. Um, and I think we all know uh, Eric Braverman was one of my mentors. And he used to say, you know, when, when I first got into this, he would say, you know, we know in medicine that when, when you're right, you just keep on going. You, you just... You just Put your feet to the pedal of the metal, and you just keep on going. And, and you know you're right, and they're going to come at you, and they're going to they're try to beat you up. But in the end, the truth always wins. So I think we're on that road, and I think that this group is kind of a, a specialized group. There are other groups like this, and I, I wish that they would all just get together and be one group, but then we'd probably need the, uh, you know, probably need the U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis or something to, uh, to house them all. Hosea 4.6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, not with this group. Um, this group has plenty of knowledge. And then the person who takes many biopharmaceutical medicines has to recover twice, once from the disease and then from the medicines, or maybe vice versa. So when I went to school, um, we, had, you know, we had the basic 30 minutes of nutrition. And Dr. Leon Singer, who was a first-class, world-class biochemist, said, and I remember this in class, and I wrote this down, actually. He said, in America, there will never be micro or macronutrient deficiencies because we have vitamin-enriched bread like Wonder Bread. And I wrote it down, and, and I believed it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So, uh, so and, that, and, and then enters my wife, and she's telling me, no, no, if it's synthetic, it's not good for you. I go, synthetic, synthetic, it doesn't matter. Natural, synthetic makes no difference. But I've been trained classically and traditionally, and of course that was wrong. So I, I guess when people ask me how I've come to where I've come to, I'd say, well, I, I figured that about 50% of what I learned in dental, dental school was right and 50% was wrong. My job was just to figure out which 50% which was, was right. So I've been on that journey for a long time. But professional training in dentistry, um, most dentists, they're trained with ADA dogma. I mean, we believe what the ADA tells us, and we're licensed by the ADA and, or by our state board licensing, uh, licensing boards, and we have to follow those and, and abide by the rules. So some of us, I remember the day where they would take people's, uh, there's a couple of people in Minnesota where I'm from, back where I'm from there, you know, back there in Minnesota. Hey, Carl, I have an old classmate here of mine, so that's, that's kind of cool. Well, he's, he's, an, he's a young guy, though, right? Right, Carl? Anyway, so back in the day, they would actually pull your license if you would, if you would even mention the fact that they had, that, that mercury was bad. You know, now I, I think things have gotten a little better, and we thank God we have the IABDM, we have the HDA, we have the IAOMT, and then we have ICAM and ACAM and AFRM and IFM. We have all these functional groups that I would encourage each one of you to join at least one or two of those groups because you, you'll, the knowledge you'll gain is tremendous. So, um, 
So there's only one disease. I'm here to tell you, I want to simplify things. I told you I want to simplify things. There's, there's but one disease. This comes from Shank, uh, Frank Schellenberger, one of my mentors. Any guesses? I'll tell, I'll tell you in, in, in a little bit, we'll go through it. It's aging. Aging is the one disease, okay? But first and foremost, I want to give thanks to Almighty God and Shabbat Shalom, everybody. It's, right, Harold? Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> um, that's our, our, our Hebraic roots. <laughs> so my family, so, so my wife and I are studying the Hebraic roots of our Christian faith. So our, our kids go, oh, so now you're Jewish? I go, no, I'm Norwegian. You know, I mean, hello. <laughs> so anyway, but that's, that's another story. Um, so, but I'd like to give credit to Almighty God and, and, and His creation because ever, ever since I was a little kid, I've, I've always wondered what it looked like inside of a human body. And back in the day, when I was going to college, I... I worked at Fairview, you probably know where this is, Carl, at Fairview Southdale Hospital, and I was an autopsy assistant for, for, for the pathologist. And so this is before I got into dental school. And so I, I'm in there doing head posts and doing, you know, and cutting organs out of the body and, and slicing them up for the pathologist and then putting the, you know, and then putting the brain back in the cavity. And, and I, the thing that hit me is that I can't believe how colorful the human body is until I got to gross anatomy. And then everything was dark gray and it smelled like formaldehyde. And you could always tell the first year classes where they were going up and down in the elevators because you just follow the trail of formaldehyde because they were doing the gross anatomy. And it was gross. <laughs> it was, it was, but again, that's another story. So anyway, we have a DNA living blueprint and we have a man-made building blueprint. And so the, the DNA living blueprint is a bioenergetic template. And we've heard a lot about this this past couple days. There's a bioenergetic component and there's a biochemical component. And, that, and that's, I'm going to try to kind of draw some, some inferences and, and make some connections for you guys today about that. Um, and in the, in the DNA living blueprint, we go through growth, growth phases, anabolic where we're growing and catabolic where, where we're in senescence and, we're, and our cells are becoming apoptotic and there are triggers and there are, there are cytoplasmic transcription switches, which we're going to talk about that trigger that. So again, that's the aging thing. It moves, it rests, it thinks and reasons. Well, some of us do anyway. It repairs and heals, and it has this framework of, made of bone, which is as strong as steel, and, it, and, and steel and an aluminum frame building. Uh, it matures in 21 years, it stops growing, it begins cellular senescence, and it becomes apoptotic. It, it, the cell, cells, they'll, it's pre-programmed cell death. Um, and the man-made the man blue, building blueprint uh, is just made of construction sheetrock, and it, it basically houses people for a while, and it falls down. So this, this was kind of, this was the whole idea on this slide. I just want to get my granddaughter in there. She, she's a little older now, as my staff knows. <clears throat> anyway, um, so you cannot pharmacologically intoxicate someone into health. How about that? Isn't that what we kind of do in mainstream medicine and in, in mainstream dentists? We, we leave them with a trail of prescriptions. Um, you know, there are, there, my rationale is there is a time and a place for surgery. There is a time and a place for drugs, but not as a first-line defense unless it's a life-threatening situation. So, but we, we tend to load them up. Um, you know, and David Baltimore, who, is, uh, who developed a, a kind of a cool machine back in the day, I said, David, that, that's a really cool saying. Can I borrow that from you? And he said, yeah, you just take it and use it. And he said, have them get a PDR and look up their symptoms because their symptoms are most likely being caused by their drugs. Well, we know that to be the case. We've heard enough about that this weekend. So remember, it's 90% lifestyle powered by dietary endocrinology. We heard about this a little bit yesterday, too. Hal did a really good job. Your food is genetic and hormonal information, folks. This is, this is huge. This is hugely important. It's hormonal information, it's medicinal, and, and it modulates the intestinal microbiome and the oral microbiome, which is, now, now they've mapped out the oral microbiome. You all know this. We all know that the gut is the, the beginning of disease, right? But the mouth is where the beginning of the gut. So where does the disease really start? So people also ask me, too, they say, well, what kind of diet do you subscribe to? And we had, we've had a number of discussions on diets, and, you know, you can't put everybody in a box. And one of my patients um, a couple weeks ago said, you know, she goes, it's an interesting thing. She was a nurse. She goes, 
We learn in school that everybody's biochemically different, everybody is, is, is different in so many ways, and then we graduate from school and we treat everybody the same. I'm like, think about that. I'm like, that, that's, that's pretty true. That's kind of what we do. But um, so I subscribe to the Forks Over Knives diet, which is from the old China study, and that's kind of a compilation of of Mediterranean, Asian Mediterranean diet, uh, keto, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of ketogenic diet, but, but the Forks Over Knives diet is, is based less on, on animal fat and protein than it, it, 5 to 10 percent on animal fat and protein and the rest is plant-based. So if you have a problem with that or, or dealing with, and, and to, the, uh, to the people who say, well, you can't, get the, you can't get the right kind of protein if you're not eating animal fat, tell that to a gorilla. I mean, you know, gorillas are the most muscular animals on the planet, and they don't, they don't eat, you know, animal protein. So the key is dietary endocrinology and, and nutrigenomics influences your genetic transcription switches, which turn, they're, they're, these are like dimmer switches. These are like, these are cytoplasmic transcription switches. So they're, they're in the cytoplasm. They're little switches, and, and they're, they can be on or off, or they can, be, they, they can kind of be dim, uh, it, it, you know, like, like a dimmer switch on, on, the, on the door. So, um, so NAD+, plus, I've got a few of these uh, uh, for examples. Uh, NRF2 upregulates the antioxidant system, for example. CERT1, CERT2, uh, that regulates uh, aging. Uh, NF-kappa-beta is a big one. Uh, we'll go through some of these a little quicker. Uh, NRF1 supports mitochondrial production, and it, it's the master regulator of the uh, anti, uh, antioxidant system. It signals the body to make antioxidant enzymes to reduce free radical oxidative stress. But remember, when you're eating things, you're affecting these systems. You're affecting these cytoplasmic transcription switches. And there's a bunch more. I mean, each one of these is a day lecture. So I just wanted to give you just kind of an overview and, like I said, tie some things together for you today. That's, that's my, my main goal and purpose. So a, a new one. It's called Niagen. It's nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. I think I'll name my next dog adenine din dinucleotide. <laughs> or apoptosis, I'm thinking. No, actually, we picked out Toto, right? I think we're going to go with Toto. Not, <laughs> not the dog with the band, okay? That, Anyway, the band, as we say, from Minnesota. Right, Joyce? So, um, but nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide, NAD+, helps with cognition and sleep. Look at all the things that it does. It helps with cognition and sleep function, increases insulin sensitivity, improves cardiovascular health. Let's see if I can get this working here, David. Boosts DNA repair, has a 52% increase in mitochondrial repair, 33% increase in muscular strength and endurance, and with exercise and CR, which is caloric reduction. You guys know what that means? CR, caloric reduction, eat less. Now, the big deal now is intermittent fasting. I just attended a new, uh, the latest A4M convention, and it used to be all about bioidentical hormones and neurotransmitter balance and taking this and, and bioidentical hormones and whatever else. Now it's all about autophagy. It's all about eating less and intermittent fasting because your body has a mechanism where it cleans itself up. It detoxifies on its own if you quit eating. And, and, so, and, and it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot cheaper than, than having to eat lunch and breakfast and dinner every day. So anyway. Go to the next one. Here. Okay, so here's, here's one of the main transcription switches. This is nuclear factor kappa beta. Have you guys all heard about this? NFKB, um, it, it shuts, it, there, there's several ways you can, if I wanted to turn the lights off in, in this whole Marriott building, I could go around to each room and turn off every single individual switch, right? I could turn off every pathway to every light and be done in about an hour and a half or maybe a day. Or I could go right to the, right to the, uh, the, the box, the, the genetic box, and just turn off the master breaker. This is a master breaker switch. So that shuts down all, all uh, inflammatory pathways. That's what nuclear factor kappa beta is. And so the way you upregulate that is coconut oil, flaxseed oil, EC, EGCG, which is green tea extract, and trans resveratrol. So that's, I have, that's in my module that, that uh, 
uh, Nick talked about. Uh, and a brand new one here is brain-derived neurogenic factor. It's, it's also called neurogenic factor. When um, we used to believe that, that nerves, once you, once you kill a nerve, if, if an oral surgeon cuts the nerve, you know, the alveolar, inferior alveolar nerve, I'm looking at you, Joe, <laughs> but you never do that. So um, it, it takes a while to regenerate. We used to think once a nerve died, it, it was dead. It was no longer. You couldn't regenerate it. Well, now we know differently. Now we know there's neurogenic factor. And, and I have, uh, these are all the things on, on the left side, the substances that can, can raise BDNF levels. And it's a powerful memory brain-boosting protein that helps you grow new brain cells called neurons. Uh, Tufts University study shows that low BDNF levels cause you to eat 40% more food. How about that? So if you raise your BDNF levels, you'll decrease your, your caloric consumption. That's pretty cool, I'm thinking. These compounds help with a phenomenon called neuroplasticity. That's what we were lacking. That we found out about 10 years ago that the brain actually can grow new neurons. So this is how you do it. Okay, so, um, and, and I, obviously we don't have enough time to go through all of these compounds, but I just wanted to give you the list, and, and uh, did, did we make any, Don, is Don in here? Did, or Nick, do, do we make any more of the books for, with, with the slide presentations? They were by order. Oh, okay, so you had to order them. Sorry about that. Okay, so, um, so let's get back to aging. What causes aging? In a nutshell, low voltage leading to, leading to low oxygenation and low pH leads to low metabolism. It's all about metabolism. The inability to make new cells and to remove damaged cells is what causes aging. And that's a lot ha having to do with those switches that I was talking about. So in, I, I could summarize a, what aging, the aging process is in this one paragraph. Aging is caused by lowered metabolism leading to lowered oxygen levels resulting in inflammation and mitochondrial damage and hydrogen ion excess or acidity because we drink water with no electrical charge and we don't get enough macro and micro minerals, right? How many people put minerals in their water? Great. Well, after I'm done talking, everybody will be doing it, okay? Because that's how you raise the voltage. That's how you raise the alkalinity. And we, we talk a lot about alkalinity and acidity. And we'll get into that, too. Um, I attended a, uh, uh, a conference with Frank Schallenberger where he's, it was a two-day conference. This is a couple, two, three years ago. And he said, I'm, I'm, he said, I'm going to do this one last time. Any, any of you practitioners who are interested, I'm going to tell you, teach you everything I know about integrative medicine, tell you what works, tell you what labs work, tell you what labs don't work, tell you what you need to do. And he busted a lot of uh, paradigms that I thought I understood, but um, it was a great lecture. So, and he says, aging is caused by lowered metabolism and improper oxygen utilization. That's why we look at ozone, ATP production, metabolism, infections, and connections. And that's what we're going to kind of be focused in on today. So, okay, major agers. So, I'm, we're, we're, one of the places we like to go is Orange Beach, Alabama. And when I think of Alabama, I don't think of beautiful beaches, but man, I'm telling you, Orange Beach is really cool. It's, it's in the Gulf Coast. You guys, have probably, probably a lot of you have been there. So we're sitting on the beach, and a friend of mine, Paul, says, hey, Tom, he goes, well, how come I see all these guys walking around with these big bellies, and, and they're walking back and forth, and they have, uh, uh, why does that happen? I said, well, Paul, it's real simple. They have hyperinsulinemia, hypercortisolemia, Lack of aromatase inhibition causing hyperestrogenemia. And he goes, oh, I got it. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for the explanation. So, so basically what, what that says is that we have too much insulin, too much cortisol, and, and too much estrogen. And so it, it deposits belly fat. So, um, so we kind of had, I, I kind of explained him how that all works. And uh, we sat and watch people for the whole, but if you notice, I mean, a lot of people are, have problems with, with uh, weight around the belly, and that's, that's really, as Tom Levy is going to tell you, that's really bad for cardiovascular disease. So, in our, in our um, intake forms, <clears throat> we have pretty extensive intake forms, because we ask people a lot of questions, because we, we want to screen them for, you know, for lots of different situations. And we have this one questionnaire, <clears throat> excuse me, that says, 
are you tired all the time? And I'd say 90% of the people, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, but it seems like 90% of the people say, I'm fatigued or I'm fatigued all the time. So why are you fatigued all the time? And this hits at the heart of aging. So can you all read that from the back? I'm, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it for you. We can, maybe Nick, we can make these, these slides available to you guys so you can see them. Uh, because... Uh, Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, so let me just read through it quickly. So why am I fatigued all the time? You're fatigued because you are toxic and you are too low on stomach acid and you have no glutathione. You don't have enough energy to move molecules across the cell membranes. Heavy metal toxicity interfere, is interfering with energy production and thyroid production. Your, your liver is full of plastic fat. You are oxygen deprived and depleted because your pH and voltage are too low. When this happens, your mitochondria makes 2 ATP in the mitochondrial membrane versus 38 ATP with oxygen. So, so we're going to get into that. Your thyroid levels are low. You are dehydrated. You have dental infections along with galvanic problems. Your adrenals are shot. You're not sleeping. Your stress levels are too high. Your ribose levels are too low. And you're probably watching the political news, too, right? <laughs> Which I, I, I quit doing for a while. I just couldn't take it anymore. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so that's why you're fatigued all the time. And so then Frank sa says, okay, so our job is clinicians. And I don't care whether you're a chiropractor or a functional medical doctor or, or a biological dentist. And I'm glad so many of you guys are getting into this biological dentistry because we can help a lot of people. And Frank said, he goes, you know, he goes, these people fly out to Nevada to see me, and I tell them they have to go see a biological dentist. And he says, $40,000 later, they come back, and they have no money to, to finish their treatment with me <laughs> after they get all their amalgams out and their root canals and whatever else. So he, so he thought that was kind of humorous. So, but he says that our job as clinicians is to first identify the broken systems and then fix the systems all at the same time and all of the systems. So if you, if you, got, you have these people coming in with all these multiple things wrong with them and you fix two of them, they get a little bit better, but they don't get all the way better. And we had some, some of the speakers talking about that yesterday where they would revert back. Um, so this, this, and these systems are, are in, uh, in my program and so I, I won't go through that, but th these are the basic systems. And, and then, then there's three signs of, of aging. Does anybody know what those three signs of aging are? I'll tell you. The first one is loss of memory. I can't remember the other two. <laughs> Boo. All right. So because of that, I made this program so I could remember stuff. So then the second thing we have to do is identify the biological stressors. So how do we do that? What are the stressors? Well, first of all, the stressors are medications. And where in the world do they come up with these names anyway? I, I'd like to know. Dupixin, Tujeo, you ever seen that guy? He's mowing, the, he's, mowing you know, he's kind of mowing his yard and he's taking Tujeo. Jardians. My favorite one is Asafix. It's called Asafix. It's, it's, a, it's a gut one. I thought that was a great name. So, um, but... Decrease, the stressors are causing decreased oxygen metabolize, metabolization and chronic inflammation. And so here they all are. And, you know, aging, your birthday, carbohydrates, plastic. You're going you're gonna to see a theme here. We're going to be running through a theme. And you're going to see it repeated over and over. And that's what I kind of want to do is get you thinking a little bit differently, more like an electrician, thinking about voltage, thinking about plastic fats, thinking about what you're putting in your body. Um, stress and anxiety leading to pain. Uh, sympathetic nervous system dominance, heart rate variability becomes very important, stress and anxiety leading to pain, obesity, what you really need is caloric re restriction, caloric reduction. It's, the, it's really the only measurable way to, to uh, stay healthier and, and, and live longer, the only really proven way. Uh, toxicity, mold, mildew, EBV, and heavy metals, EMFs, I, I, I'm really concerned about these, this 5G stuff coming on board. I, I think that's going to be it's going to cause a lot of issues, and I, I'm trying to, uh, that's going to be my next thing is to try to get into that a little bit and find out more about it. Disrupted oral microbiota. If you're, if you're uh, oral microbiota, now they've mapped the oral microbiome, and, and, and if you know some of the probiotics that we're going to get into in a little bit later, um, 
you can, you can fix a lot of things like dental decay and gum disease and wh whatever else. So disrupted gut microbiota, we all know about that. OSA sleeping and breathing disorders, dead water with no mineral load, decreased voltage, loss of hormones, blah, 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 the list goes on and on. And then dental infections and scars, scar tissue. So in our practice, we utilize some of the, uh, in the Bio 101 with Marjan, where, is she in here? Okay. Uh, you went through some of the labs, and we were talking about his, uh, these laboratories, and, and I didn't want to make a pest on it myself, so I just kept my hand down. But I said, the, these are some, of, but we started talking about ZRT kits. And they're, what's cool now about laboratory testing is you don't even have to go to a physician anymore. You just need to get a nurse practitioner or call up, call up some, or, or come and talk to me or Nick or, you know, Marjan or somebody and say, hey, I want to order some of these, these uh, home test kits. And you can test your neurotransmitters, you can test your hormones, you can run a, you can run a cardiovascular panel, and, and you can, you can uh, so the, the ones that I recommend are the oxidative stress testing, and, and Genova, Genova Diagnostic makes them, ZRT, there are a number of different labs, uh, Sonesco is a new lab, and, and uh, Genova Di Digestive Testing, Comprehensive Digestive Stool Analysis, but you know, they're not gonna come into a dental office and say, hey, I want a co comprehensive digestive stool analysis. At least I don't think so. We don't, we don't get too many patients like that. But you, you can, you know, in your wisdom, you can say, hey, I think that you should, you know, if you're having all these gut issues, this might be a good way to handle it. And then take the kit, do, send it to the lab, and then take it to your nurse practitioner. We, in, in, our, in our town, we have a list of biological uh, practitioners, holistic natural practitioners, nurse practitioners, and physicians. And, and uh, like I said, when we, when we moved down here um, 11 years ago, there was hardly anybody. I mean, nobody knew anything about natural health, and now it's become a mecca. It's kind of, it's getting more fun. So genomics testing, uh, I've got a really good genomics test kit for you. It, it puts everything into, it's called Neurobiologics. It's a test kit made by uh, Kendall Stewart uh, in, from Houston. He's a neurobiologist, and he's got uh, 57 SNPs. You all know about single nucleotide polymorphisms, Gen genomic SNPs. About, I heard about this. I think I heard uh, Dawn say she heard about this 30 years ago, these SNPs testing. I heard about them about 20 years ago at the A4M. They said, one day you'll, you'll walk into your doctor's office, they'll run a genomic test, and then they'll start, they'll start your treatment. Well, it, 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 that time has come. So <clears throat> this uh, test kit, uh, I can talk to you about any of this stuff I can talk to you about later, too, if we don't have enough time to cover it. Uh, neurotransmitter testing, spectrocell testing is, is, is an antioxidant uh, in vitamin test kit, it'll test glutathione, et cetera. LPP, cardiovascular testing. You have to do a lipoparticle protein test, and I think Tom Levy will tell you that too. You have to test the particles. It's not just cholesterol. It's not even about cholesterol. Cholesterol's in the wrong, I, I remember it, one of my, when I first met Stephen Sinatra, who's a metabolic cardiologist. He walks in <clears throat> to a group of about 4,000 physicians. There's, a, say, three to 4,000 physicians, dentists, gastroenterologists, uh, acupuncturists, whatever. And he says, so how many of you still believe in the cholesterol myth? Raise your hand. And I look at the guy next to me, I'm like, what's he talking about? What, 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 what do you mean, cholesterol myth? <clears throat> and he said, cholesterol is at the scene of the crime, but it's not guilty. It's all the little v VLDL particles and VLDL1, VLDL2, and, and, it's, and it's the oxidation of the, the lipoprotein particles that is the problem. That's what causes cardiovascular, uh, heart, heart attacks. So anyway, you can pick up a lot of this stuff on these tests. And uh, Genova, a, a good overall uh, vitamin mineral testing is Genova Nutri-Eval test. Okay, so how are we doing here? How are we doing on time? Okay. So dentistry, oxygen, and airway space. Oral system links are two-way streets. Okay, like I said, when I first started, I didn't, I didn't know one link from the other. I, 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 you know, I just got bored drilling and filling teeth, putting in amalgams. It never made sense to me, but that's what I was trained to do. And I think that's, that's partly what, you know, what the problem is, is physicians and, and clinicians and practitioners, they, we do what we're trained to do. So if, if you don't do orthopedic expansion, you, you're very limited in dentistry. Uh, Dr. Singh, one time I heard him talking and he said that, uh, he goes, I don't know how you guys practice biological dentistry without doing, without doing orthopedic expansion. And I said, I agree. 
So, <clears throat> chronically ill patients need a biological dentist more than they need a medical doctor. That's coming from Jerry Tennant. Great health requires a well-formed, disease-free mouth. And um, mouth breathing and underdeveloped jaws can shorten your lifespan by about 10 years. And that, that's a bona fide study. I, I, I didn't put all the studies down, but if you want, I can get them for you. Uh, most, most moms don't care about the studies. You know, they just say, fix it, fix the kid. I want to know what's wrong here. But, but doctors, all doctors, they, they want to know the studies because we, we're trusted not to believe. But uh, there's, there's mouth breathing and underdeveloped jaws can shorten your lifespan. That, to me, is a big deal. Is cancer a recent phenomenon? Yes. Is biological dentistry a recent phenomenon? No. In the 1920s, we all know about Weston Price. I'm not going to, you know, delve into that, but we, we, I think most of us here know the history of that. Um, but in the 19th century, cancer rates were very low. Well, why is that? And the answer is because they had increased voltage. Well, how did they increase their voltage? What's different today than it was, you know, 100 years ago? Well, they walked around barefoot and played outside in the dirt. That causes grounding. Low voltage. Electrons flow from, from areas of high voltage to low voltage. They didn't have insane vaccine schedules. How about that one? Again, don't miss Dell today. Just don't miss him. Um, they played outdoors in the rain and in streams. They, they stayed out in the sun without sunblock. And we heard all about that yesterday. I was so glad for Dr. Stacia. Stacia? Stasha. That was, a, that was a phenomenal lecture. I just learned more than I ever thought I could. In, a, in one hour. They stayed, okay, they ate grass-fed, non-processed animal meats and butter, and they drank raw milk. That's a Weston and Price Foundation thing. They ate more plant-based protein. Again, forks over knives. If you haven't seen that movie, Forks Over Knives, take a look at it. They didn't play video games and use cell phones, and they had no EMFs. Um, they ate food from the land raw and in season. They went to bed when darkness occurred, so their melatonin wasn't, wasn't all messed up. So... What's really messing up your health? <laughs> and the answer is, weighing yourself? No, I don't think so. Low voltage leading to low oxygenation levels leading to low metabolism. You're going to get sick of me saying that, but I want you to, if, if you don't, if, if, the one thing I want you to remember is low voltage leading to low oxygen levels leading to low metabolism causes aging, and aging is the problem. End of story. So thank you all for coming. No. <laughs> so, um, and then, and then what else is screwing up your health are some of the current medical myths that we believe, right? How about this one? Cholesterol is bad for you. We just talked about that a little bit. So is salt. Is salt bad for you? No. But it's got to be refined salt. Why? Because that, that boosts the voltage and it increases the alkalinity. Okay? Um, fluoride is great. <laughs> uh, I got a few slides on that for you. But we, we've heard so much about, I mean, th this group, we don't sit here and have, we don't have to really... Uh, finagle, uh, you know, fluoride's bad, mercury's bad, but there, it is so overwhelmingly bad, it's, it's really bad, right? <laughs> I'm not going there. Um, Low-fat diets keep you thin, how about that? There, there's one of the biggest myths of all times. And then mercury can't hurt you, yeah, right. So, and then the other thing is follow the biblical dietary laws, okay, because they'll just do it. Just, and if you haven't, if you haven't seen... Jordan Rubin's uh, video on, on, on pork and the reasons why you shouldn't eat pork, you, you need to see that. Okay. So, and then how about uh, some of the other things that are screwing up your health? Are the media's definition of a diet, a three-week starvation crash, crash course to allow one to fit into a swimsuit. That's the media's definition. And then, or you could be suffering from, this is a new phenomenon, Optical rectitis. <laughs> Anybody familiar with or have, have you diagnosed that? That's where your optic nerve gets tangled up with your rectal nerve and you have a crappy outlook on life. <laughs> they, they said I couldn't swear, so, so I, I had to say crappy. Okay, so here's another study um, from Adipose College. Women who are slightly overweight tend to outlive men who mention it. I love that one. And then there's, somebody brought this up yesterday, idiopathic nosocomial disease. Idiopathic nosocomial disease means a hospital contracted disease by a physician. They have no clue as to what's wrong, and if you don't get out of the hospital, you're going to die. Bottom line. So be very careful about checking in the hospitals. We've had that discussion, Joyce, right? <laughs> 
Okay, so, and then there's Dunlop disease, of course, and Laura set me straight on this one. That's where your belly Dunlops over your pants. <laughs> that, which is, when you see this, this is a classic sign of metabolic syndrome. So here's the, here's the thing to remember. Your genes are not your destiny. Your dinner is. Why? Because of the nutrigenomics and because of the, because of the dietary endocrinology. What you eat affects your genes. So what really causes cancer? Our modern low oxygen environment is the cause of all disease. Wow. That's from Al Sears. That's another guy that I follow. And Al Sears is a, he's an anti-aging physician. Uh, pretty popular guy. He's, a, he's out of Florida. The lack of oxygen is the number one cause of cancer. It's a metabolic disease. As oxygen drops, cancer rises. Low oxygen levels trigger the spread of cancerous tumors. And that comes from John Hopkins University. So, I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to argue with them. All chronic pain, suffering, and disease is caused by a lack of oxygen at the cellular level. And that comes from Dr. Arthur Guyton. You, all of you guys, have, did you use the medical physiology textbook by Arthur Guyton? I still have it. My, my wife is trying to get, get me to get rid of all the piles of books and stuff I have. And I'm going to do it, dear. I promise. Uh, but I still have the medical physiology textbook from Arthur Guyton. But it's a good one. What perpetuates cancer? A reactive sick care insurance system based on a flawed, outdated medical model trying to surgically eliminate tumors that are protective, not causative. The tumors aren't the problem. The tumors are there as a protective uh, methodology. Okay, so voltage, pH, and oxygen. Again, there is, there is a connection between voltage, pH, and oxygen. I'm going to go through these next few slides kind of quickly because it, it gets very technical. But I want you to get the uh, I want you to get the, uh, the the crux of it, and this is I give credit to Jerry uh, Tennant for all this uh, all this information. Remember, a low membrane pH, and I, I'm I want to zero in on the mitochondrial membrane, a basement membrane of the mitochondria. A lower membrane pH leads to lowered oxygen content, which in turn needs, yields less ATP production, and that's a huge huge deal. Water controls the voltage. This is why you got to keep, you know, this is why you got to keep, if you, put, if you put dead water in your car battery, what happens? Nothing. Your car won't start because it can't hold a charge. So water controls the, the pH, oxidation, voltage, and toxicity. And then, of course, the solution for pollution is dilution. So what happens when, when your cells become toxic, they, they store the toxic waste in the fat cells, in the adipose cells, and then, and then they imbibe water in order to, and they swell, and so your, 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 your adipose cells get, get you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. And it takes, according to Jerry, it takes 50, minus 50 millivolts to grow new cells. Water is either acidic or alkaline, and this allows water to donate electrons to the, to, uh, to the redox system, or conversely, to steal the electrons. So, and then what about the biological terrain? This is kind of, <clears throat> this is kind of like uh, your your garden, your your outdoor garden. When 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 your garden has the, has the right proper nutrients, guess what happens? You, you grow nice healthy plants. So the same thing happens in your body, and and so that's called the biological terrain. And there, there's a bunch of factors that I didn't really get into because that's a whole. I've got a whole other slide series based on biological terrain, but it's a quite interesting concept. Um, are we so? Are we truly getting sick people well at the core, or are we just moving symptoms around? How do we really know? We have to test, we have to test the uh, biological terrain. And so what disrupts the biological terrain, it's mainly low voltage and low oxygen metabolism, and what I like to call the cellular terrorists. Okay? This, I, I think this is a good way to, to kind of remember it and to mention it to your patients so they kind of make the connection that, hey, these things can, these things can be good or bad depending on whether you're, whether you're deficient or whether you're, whether you're plentiful with, with, with uh, these types of terrorists. So what controls inflammatory terrorism? All of these things right here, and I'm going to go through this a little quicker, but the, look at the last one. Vitamin D3, um, a level of, uh, I heard yesterday Stasha said it was 60 to 80. I think common consensus now is 80 to 100 nanogram. Is it nano, nanograms for deciliter or whatever the measurement is? 80 to 100 is where you want to be. Uh, vitamin D3 is a huge critical nutrient. And if you're not, if you're lax in vitamin D3, nothing's working right. And I think we found that out yesterday, especially your sleep. I never had, I never understood how it was connected to the sleep cycle until she explained it yesterday. That was brilliant. 
So, nuclear factor kappa beta, adequate rest, sleep, insomnia, controlling stress levels, balance your hormones, clean, clean alkaline water, blah, 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 on and on it goes. Okay, so you all remember in bio, uh, high school biology or maybe dental school or maybe physiology school or whatever, where they said the brain is, uh, the, the, the nucleus is the brain of the cell. Remember they used to say that? Well, no longer. It's the cellular membrane because that's where all the control is. That's where the control into and out of the membrane is. So we live in a, in a very toxic world, and especially in, in our field. So remember the cell membranes must have proper mineral content for active transport to occur. The membrane voltage must be minus 20 to minus 25 millivolts. And this is Jerry Tennant's work. And he decided that, or he found that, that there's a correlation between minus 20 millivolts and minus 25 millivolts in the membrane, in the cell membrane, the bilipid polar membrane, and also in the arterial blood. Because the, the 7.35 to 7.45 pH that's, that, that your blood is maintained at is the equivalency of minus 20 millivolts to minus 25 millivolts. How's that for, you know, for, ac for an accidental thing? I mean, to me, that's, that's the Lord putting this all together. It, it just, there's no other way you can explain that. But the cell membrane must have proper mineral content for active transport, and the, and the voltage must stay and remain at minus 20 to minus 25 millivolts. When it hits minus 50, then you are growing new cells. When it hits plus 30 millivolts, you have cancer. And here's the Border Patrol. Now, the, the cool thing about the, the Border Patrol is it's, it's a bilipid polar membrane, so that's why you can't load up your membranes with plastic fats. It drives down the voltage. And, and things will not pass through the cellular membrane. I'm going to uh, just go through this a little quicker. Here, here's kind of a, a, a compilation of acidity, pH, voltage, and oxygenation, how they're all related. But, but when you think of disease, think of low acidity, think of low oxygenation, think of low metabolism, and think of low pH. But, but I have a caveat here because... We, we, we always talk in terms of we want to raise the alkalinity in, in, the, in the body, but there are certain parts of the body that, that remain very acidic, like, i.e., the stomach. If your stomach is not acidic enough, you're, you're in trouble, okay? So, like Jerry says, you've got to think more like an, uh, more like an electrician. But, but uh, zero, at zero pH, so you're at 400 millivolts, plus 400 millivolts. At 14 pH, you're at minus 400 millivolts. And then you become alkaline, you're, you're an electron donor, you're in reduction, you're anabolic, you're in the growth phase, you're constructive, and, and you have high oxygen content. Now, here's why this is such a big deal. ATP can only be made in the presence of oxygen. High voltage. Oxygen is the most abundant element in the body, 62 to 74%. When, when you deprive a cell of 35% of its O2 content for 48 hours, it will become cancerous. That's Otto Warburg's work. And we all know about Otto Warburg and, and his, his uh, take on cancer. So, in low, with low voltage, you, you only create two molecules of ATP in the mitochondrial membrane and, and 38 ATP molecules when it's fully oxygenated. That's why we play, like they said yesterday, we play a huge part of this as far as you know, mouth breathing, mouth breathing and nasal breathing. So boosting mitochondrial production, uh, just if you look down at the, uh, the bottom part, in the mitochondria with proper oxygenation, acetyl carnitine, and this is where vegans are getting in trouble because they, they, they do not make acetyl carnitine. They, they don't take enough in because it's mostly in, in, in uh, red meat. Acetyl carnitine shuttles in the fatty acid across the membrane if it's not plasticized. It turns, it turns it into 38 ATP molecules with proper oxygenation and only two ATP molecules are made without sufficient oxygen. And so you wonder, well, why am I fatigued all the time? Because you're not making enough ATP. That's, that's the energy cycle. So there you go. There you go, Lod. Okay, Healing is Voltage. Here's, here's Jerry's book. This is just another uh, kind of a sheet to, just to kind of help you draw the connection. And, and you can print this stuff off. You can show your patients. We, we sometimes will give this, this information to our patients and say, here, you know, just because our patients are really, as I'm sure your patients are, they really want to know stuff. They're there to learn. 
The optimal diet contains 80% alkaline foods and 20% acidic foods. And the blood plasma has a preferred pH of 7.35 to 7.45 in the arteries. Veins, it's a little lower due to a carbon dioxide shift. And then there's a new thing called, the, have you ever heard of this one? The mitochondrial permeability transition pore? This is where melatonin comes in. This would be another good name for a dog. Mitochondrial permeability transition pore. Maybe not. MPTP. Um, anyway, uh, if you look in the, M the MPT, this is a pore in the, in the, uh, in the basement membrane, and it's, it's, uh, it's newly discovered protein in the mitochondria, and when this protein is triggered, it loses its ability to keep a charge, and the voltage drops across the membrane, and ATP can't be made. So serotonin will close this, this whole, it will shut this whole mechanism down. I'm sorry, melatonin. And, and, and now, now the new take on melatonin, there's, there's a kind of a dichotomy in, in, in melatonin where they'll say, oh, you got to take a very minimal amount to sleep, and it's only, you know, you can't take too much. And, and to which uh, Schellenberger says, bunk on that. He goes, he says, it, it's such, a, it's such a, a major nutrient, you need 120 to 160 to up to 180 milligrams QD per day. So I up my dose, and I'm sleeping really well. Not you yet, dear, but we'll get there. <laughs> um, okay, so what hinders ATP production? All of these things. Heavy metal toxicity, chain terminators such as mercury. Mercury is a chain terminator. It, it, it stops the ATP production. It bonds with, merc it bonds with magnesium, and, it, and, and you get no, no energy out of the link. Lack of acetyl L carnitine, insulin resistance, plastic cellular membranes, acidic dietary lifestyle, oxygen deficiency, low voltage. You get the picture? I, I want you to, to kind of get the picture. So, in summary, how do I regain a healthy mouth? Get rid of your dental infections, get on a ketogenic based plant, forks over diet uh, type diet. Utilize ozone therapy, achieve hormone and neurotransmitter balance, increase nitric oxide levels. We'll get to that here in a little bit. How much time do we have? 40 minutes left? Perfect. Okay, great. Um, increase voltage, increase macro. Perfect. Perfect. Um, okay, so here's, here's, here's how you regain a healthy mouth. And we all kind of know about this. But, you know, when print this stuff off, give this to your patients. So get rid of your dental infections. These are major sources of chronic inflammation. They become major systemic causes for cancer. Focal dental infections can easily spread pathogenic bacteria to other parts of the body, especially, and there's the list, and, the, and it's all the stuff that we all know about. Understand how it's all connected to your mouth. There have been some terrific lectures this, uh, this weekend about that. It's all, it's all connective tissue. These are all connective tissue meridians, but until you, I mean, we had a patient, I had a patient here yesterday who flew in from Virginia. He came from Thai. Thai said, hey, you got to call Tom, and so he came, and he flew in, and Dr. Joe did a great job taking his, he had infections all over his, uh, his maxilla. Took him out, he was here yesterday, and um, he said, I, the first thing I asked him, I said, so do you have, do you have a lot of, um, kidney and urinary and bladder problems? And he says, I have prostate cancer. I go, oh, okay, well, there you go. There's the connection. So we took out all of his infections. We ozonated, and he's, he, got, he jumped on a plane. He came here, and we got him in, and he was just, he was ecstatic. And I put him on a whole bunch of nutrient, a, a nutrient regimen. I got him a, 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 a prostatic cancer person in, in Atlanta, and he's just, he's happy as a lark. So... This is what we can do for people, and, and, and we're, we're not treating them. I, I, I don't claim to. We don't, we don't treat cancer. We, we treat infections, and, and we treat oral disease. But, but it has so many systemic implications, it, it just will make your head spin once you understand the connections. So inflammatory mediators, gut and brain via the vagus nerve, that's a, that's a big connection. Mouth, airway, and, and oxygen metabolism connected to the arch form. Okay, dental infections and cancer connection failed. Root canals, we pretty much know about that. The, the bacterial endotoxins can enter the systemic arterial circulation and cause the release of cytokine modulators, mostly through A1C. 
um, or CRP, I should say, CRP, C-reactive protein, which goes to the liver, produces cytokine ramp up of, the, of all the cytokine modulators, and tells your body you're in inflammatory overdrive. This is what I tell people. I try to give them the, the here's the bottom line, okay, because they don't want to know about all the, they just say, what is causing this? What are the implications? What can I do about it? So that's kind of how we try to run our, our operations. Oral infections cause systemic conditions. Okay, I'm going to speed this up a little bit here. Uh, pathogens settle, here's another thing. Pathogens settle in areas of low electrical resistance. And we'll get into that in a little bit. The 10-step plan to clean up your mouth. This comes actually from the HDA. I borrowed this from the HDA. And so the, another thing you can, you can kind of type out and, um, and give to your patients. Detoxification and, and remineralization. We have a protocol that's it, it's pretty fairly extensive on our website, and then you can talk to me about that later. Um, physiological effects of oral galvanism. Remember Alan? <clears throat> Was it Laura? Were you working with me on Alan? There was this guy we, we were taking out. He, he only had one thing wrong, he had, he, dentistry-wise. He had a, he had a uh, porcelain fused a metal crown, and we took the crown off. We, we numbed him up, we took the crown off, we talked, to, and, there, and there was some, there, there was not even any metal underneath. Uh, but it was a porcelain muse, fused to metal crown. And I took the crown off, and about five seconds later, he goes, oh my God. I go, Alan, what's wrong? What, what, what happened? He goes, well, I never told you this, but I had this ringing in my ears, and it went away. He goes, it just went away. And I'm like, you mean just now? He goes, I said, well, how long was it? How long was it there? He goes, 10 years. He said, I never told you. It's just, I've just been living with it. And so, I mean, that's how quickly it can happen. I mean, uh, most people don't have, have an effect that, that quickly, but it did on Alan. So, I mean, we see this, I'd say, on a weekly basis, if not on a daily basis. But it, it lets you know that you're doing the right thing and you're in the right space. So, um, okay, so... The, Case histories, okay, this is from the HDA communicator. Okay, so why are mercury and toxic metals so dangerous? Well, for one thing, fluoride plus hydrochloric acid in your, remember we said that your gut uh, acidity has to be super acidic. Fluoride plus hydrochloric acid makes hydrofluoric acid, which can cause stomach cancer. Hello? I mean, that sound good? Fluoride interferes with brain function. And we found out about that yesterday. Fluoride is an endocrine disruptor. It contributes to hypothyroidism. And it lowers, IQ. there are studies now that say it lowers IQs in, in children, probably in adults too. So people say, well, do I, do you want, should I take fluoride? I go, yeah, if, sure, if you want to, if you want to get a hypothyroidism, if, if you want to dumb down your kid, and, and if you want to screw up your gut, go ahead. But I said there's, what I'll tell people is that the, the only reason that, that organized dentistry will do, that we do fluoride uh, treatments is because there's, there's an insurance code for it. But, it. but when I was in school and I worked with this biochemist, Leon Singer, I, I opted out of the biochemical class, the biochemical lab. And we did an experiment. I remember Durafat that you'd paint on the tooth. It was loaded with fluoride, and okay, back in that day, we were on a quarter system, so it was nine weeks. This is at the University of Minnesota. So we measured, iontophoretically, we measured the ion migration across the membrane or the enamel of a tooth in nine weeks. Do you know what it was? You're right, zero. So let me ask you a question. If, if in nine months, no fluoride painted on a tooth, even if it worked, I mean, besides from the fact that it doesn't work, um, if it migrated across the cell, uh, across the enamel matrix at a rate of zero in nine months, what's a one-minute fluoride going to do? <laughs> I mean, it's that, that's some of the some of the dumb things that we do in dentistry. But so we don't do that anymore. But and and I can uh, you know I can thank my wife for doing that because she was the first one that told me I don't want you giving fluoride to the kids. So thank you, Jan. Um, mercury binds with ATP and displaces mercury from the ATP complex. It, uh, there are, you know, we spent a whole day talking about this on Friday. 
So there are so many more things that, that you can talk about. Mercury contributes to many disease states. It, it, it's kidney toxic. It's a neurotoxin. You know, it, by the, um, I think it's the very prestigious journal, um, New England Journal of Medicine, has now declared fluoride a neuroexcitotoxin. So tell that, tell that to your physician. So water, water fluoridation is dangerous to mothers, infants, and adults. Because uh, here's one thing, it causes placental fluorosis, it causes preeclampsia in pregnant women. And in the gut, uh, yeah, okay, it's declared a neuroexcitotoxin by the prestigious neuro, neuro I, I'm having a hard time reading this because it's so small, sorry about this. Um, but you can, oh, here's, an, here's one thing I wanted to tell you. It can cause the pineal gland to calcify. How about that? That sounds like a pretty big deal. So, you, you, you know, I mean, obviously, there's, there's no good reason to do mercury or fluoride. I mean, I, why they still allow it is totally beyond me. It, to me, it's criminal. So where do the bugs hang out in your head? In areas of low voltage, in your TM joints, in the axis region, the at, at, axis and atlas region, in your sinuses, in the TMJs bilaterally, failed root canals, you know, all those places where the voltage is low. Extraction sites, perio pockets. What about oral cancer? So, okay, so we don't really treat oral cancer, but we, we see, remember that case? Is Joe still here? Remember that case that I sent to you? The oral cancer, the cancer of the lip and the mouth and, yeah. Um, I'll tell you, you don't see a lot of oral cancers because it's so disfiguring. It, it, it is just, it, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> Joyce, I hear you there. So, um, oh, wait, I wanted to say one other thing. Now we have this new vaping crisis. How about that? Um, this is becoming a very big deal. It, it contains propylene glycol, which is by, by far my favorite nutrient, propylene glycol. It's antifreeze. Why they put it in food, I have no idea, but I guess it's to make it slippery. Or maybe so it doesn't freeze when you put it in a 40 degree below freezer or whatever. Um, Nickel and cadmium contains and formaldehyde, which is known to cause cancer. Okay, so microbes and cancer cannot grow in an alkaline media. Salivary, what you have to do is to keep your salivary pH at 7.8. That's the pH where all cancer cells will die. And a lot of us are riding, if, if you're riding around 5.5 pH in the mouth, you're in trouble. Now you're reversing the dental fluid transport system, and I, we'll get into that a little bit. Here's some cancer testing um, uh, tests, thymidine kinase, Enox, uh, the guy from Florida that, uh, that I've gotten to know fairly well, R or Mark Rosenberg uses that, Oncobot test, Nagalase test, and, and then CC5 Rantis for, uh, for uh, root canals. Um, oral pharyngeal and pancreatic cancer. I want to move through this a little quicker. Here's some of the salivary biomarkers that are now being used. Uh, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, the most lethal cancer known. Uh, study of 51,000 male doctors. That's a significant study. With gingivitis had a 64% higher risk for pan pancreatic cancer. How about that? And then, of course, we all know that HPV, especially HPV-16, is related to throat cancer. And that's according to the New England Journal of Medicine which happens to be my, most, my favorite al alternative uh, journal. That's why they don't have a, a right to Yeah. I wasn't even going to bring that up, but <laughs> uh, maybe Dell will bring that up. I know, that's, that's insane. I, I, I won't be on the grid on that one. Uh, okay, what about root canals? Well, we, you know, Don did a, uh, an amazing uh, documentary on that. Our, a lot of our patients saw it before they took it down. Uh, Tony, have you seen this one? Okay, uh, we, we bought, uh, I bought two, so if anybody wants one or, you know, we, we want, we're going to play it in our lobby. Um, but it, it's great, it's a great film. Um, the whole issue boils down to this. Can a tooth be filled internally and remain uninfected years after the inside of the pulp canals have been filled? The answer is no. Uh, but the mainstream organized dentistry camp says absolutely yes. So who's correct? Well, yeah, I think you know the answer to that one. The problem is that there, within the tooth, there are three miles of dental tubules outside of the main canals that remain unfilled. Now, you can, you can, we've, we've tried, when we first got into ozonation, we started to ozonate, but it really didn't change a whole lot. 
you know, it made, it made them feel a little better, and it made us feel a little better, but we've kind of, a band, we've kind of moved away from that. People, if people come in and they'll say, well, I don't want to do anything just yet, and I, well, okay, well, we can ozonate it three, four times or whatever, um, but it's, not, it's still going to remain infected. And so, so what I learned from Marjan is that, that you've, you, you've not only reduced the voltage in that area, you've disconnected the, elect, the electrical grid. And, and so two things have, have, have gone. You have to remove the tooth. Is, uh, why we save them is beyond us all, I'm, I'm quite sure. Breast cancer in the root canal connection. I um, have a little story here for you. This involves Tony and his wife, Marcy. Um, do you all know Tony Jimenez? If you don't, you need to. This gentleman sitting right here. He's, uh, he's an amazing physician, naturopath. Uh, we had a patient that... Uh, came into us, she, a beautiful young lady, she was what, 34 years of age, she had a very, she, she was on a chemotherapeutic drug, there was an experimental drug, nobody on the study had, had lived, she was going to, I mean, she was destined to die. And she, they gave her, I don't know what, six months, three months, four months, or whatever. And one day she comes in and she says to Joyce, she goes, I'm done, I'm ready, I'm just ready to, to you know, I, I don't want to live. She had two young boys, cute little boys. She was married, but her family wasn't really behind her. And I said, I said, uh, you've got to, you've got to look at this truth about cancer. And and she did. And she and I said, I said, Jessica, you're going to have to make, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to go against your whole family if you if you want to live. And you you you're just you're just going to have to pull out all the stops. I can't tell you to do it. Nobody can tell you to do it. It has to be your your decision. So she thought about, she, we gave her the Truth About Cancer book and the, some of the videotapes and all that. She calls back and, and says, okay. And, and Joyce, when Joyce told me that, I said, if we can do anything to save this young lady, let's do it. So we got on the phone. We called Longevity Resources. And we said, how much will you discount this if we buy a machine for one of our patients? And then we thought, okay, well, we can use it, you know, we can use it for cancer patients. So we've got, we've actually have three ozone machines, and they they gave us you know, not much off. But we said we didn't care. We, so we bought the machine, and she she very religiously used it. She got off the cancer therapy. I can't remember the name of the chemo drug, but everybody in the study had died, and so um, she she was very religious. We bought her the. I said you you take the machine, Jessica. We'll get you the the oxygen tanks, and she was on it for how long? Almost uh, almost a year. She was told she would never, she wasn't going to live. She'd never have kids again. It, it, she had she had a ER positive uh, breast cancer, right? right, Tony? So, she she lived through that, and then I ran into Tony's wife at Ty and Charlene's house at a Christmas thing a couple years ago, and I said, Marcy, you've got, you, please take this patient. And so she went down to Hope for Cancer, and they worked with her. I I'm here to tell you today that she is now three years post-op, she's no cancer, at least it's arrested, she has a, she's had a baby and she has, a, she has a, a Christian ministry. So that's the power of what we're doing. And I, I think about that a lot. Okay, so let's move, on, we'll move along here. So you all know about osteocavitation, that's a great picture by the way, I see this picture everywhere. <clears throat> but it's just dead bone, it's, it's an osteomyelitic bone. Um, at least 20% of all hip replacements in the USA are due to osteonecrosis. So the orthopedic surgeons get this. Why don't the dentists? You tell me. Protein-rich fibrin and osteogenesis. To grow new bone, here's what you need. You need progesterone. So those of you who are getting past your you know, 40s and 50s, you need to have, you need to have your hormone levels checked. <clears throat> and like we said, that there's some of those test kits. Talk to me about these test kits. They're simple to do. They're they're very effective, and they're and they're accurate. They're much more accurate than a just a generalized blood test. Vitamin K, K1, K. Somebody asked me about K2. You have to take K2. There's there's vitamin K2. There's MK2 and, and M, MK7, or MK4 and MK7. <clears throat> they need a combination of both. K, vitamin K2 mobilizes calcium out of the arterial wall and out of the kidneys and out of the, uh, out of the gallbladder and into the bone. So without vitamin K2, uh, you, you, how are we doing? You doing okay? I thought you were going to dance for us. <laughs> Bring Toby in here. Let's get him to dance. 
<laughs> okay, so vitamin K1, K2, estrogen, and testosterone. Women need testosterone. They need a small amount because it, it sensitizes your progesterone receptors and your estrogen receptors. That's why you guys don't need as much, obviously, but you need some. Okay, and then we have some new stuff called psilidin, which is, which is, a, which is a, an absorbable silica. It's an OSA, orthosilicic acid. It's in beer. So you can either drink a whole lot of beer, dark beer, or you can take the psilidin. And this works great for remineralization for enamel for, and for, for uh, strengthening bone and for increased collagen, collagen type 1. And then everybody, anybody ever heard of a vibrational power plate? Yeah, th those, those are really good too. And now, I mean, when, it, when I first saw one at the A4M convention, it was, I think they were like $15,000. Now you can buy them for two. And they're just little home versions, and they do the same thing. So they're, they're pretty cool to have. We have one, but we, we seldom use it. <laughs> but the, daughter, the granddaughters use it. They, they like to turn it on and off. Um, increasing stomach acid. This is a, this is a really big deal. Because a lot of people come in with gut dysfunction. Tell them they need iodine, hydrochloric acid, which we call betaine hydrochloride, zinc, B1, and B12. What about implants? Um, no metallic implants for sure. Uh, I don't know that there are enough studies, that, at least that I've seen, that, that really tell whether um, implants are, are dangerous or not. Maybe, Joe, maybe you'd have some feeling about that. But we're, we're kind of into ceramic implants, uh, zirconium implants. Uh, I, I, personally, I maintain that in order for you to keep the bone healthy, you need to put the piezoelectric forces back onto the bone structure. And the only way to do that is to put pressure on it and so to put an implant in. And, and then plus, if, if you're going to bridge it, you're going you're to destroy two perfectly good teeth on either side, unless they need crowns. So that's kind of my, my bent on that. But I know that goes all over the map. Ozone therapy, how does it work? Microbes have no antioxidant systems. Remember, low voltage causes low oxygenation. And when ozone is added to a living system, it creates a transient oxidative burst. Now, this is that famous free radical oxidative stress that everybody talks about. But, and so we need a small amount for our redox signaling potential. But we can't, if we have too much, then it's bad. And then, and, but we have... Uh, antioxidant systems in our cells so we can fight a small oxidative burst. But, but bugs can't. And I'm talking about viruses, bacterium, uh, you know, chlamydia, everything. Spirochetes, they, they can't operate. But they do harbor themselves in areas of low voltage. So when you go in and you give them an oxidative burst, you raise the voltage, you, you kill them because they have no antioxidant system. And it works every time. The only... Uh, and I took... Um, Schallenberger's uh, O2 or oxygenation, oxygenation course and another guy from New Jersey. And um, the only, the only um, downside to ozonation is you can cause a rapid Herxheimer reaction if you're killing too many bugs all at once. So that's the only thing you've got to kind of pay attention to. But ozone has so many applications, it's crazy. Uh, and then there's this other thing called hypochlorous acid, HOCl, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so this is kind of how we use it. We just, we just syringe it in. We also can do trays for our perio patients. We do that. It's just three, uh, three, ozone, or three oxygens connected together. It's highly unstable. So if you're using it as a gas, and I don't know if you know this or not, but if you're using it in a syringe, hold it upside down because the ozone will stay in. The minute you turn it upside down, the ozone flows out. And, and so it, if, you, if you freeze it or if you put it in a gel, it'll last for a long, long time. But ozone is super effective against cancer. I didn't say that, but, but it is, okay? Ozone can, uh, therapy for, oh, I just said that. So we, we do injection, we do cupping, we do water insufflation, we do gas injection. And it's very painless, um, at least for most people. Uh, for those people who have uh, prostatic issues, rectal insufflation, colorectal and prostate cancer, uh, there's these hyperoxy ozone or vaginal issues, uh, cervical cancers. There's um, uh, longevity, uh, longevity research has these oxyozone sticks and they work very well. Um, skin can for skin cancer, you can use a cupping technique. Periodontal disease, CVD and cancer, um, it causes all these things. Causes, 
root canals cause bacterial penetration into the systemic circulation. We all know that. Streptococcus sanguis is the, is the main culprit there. And then what about oxygen in the microvasculature? Do you ever think about when you have a, when they do bypass surgery, you have 60,000 miles of vessels. So when they do bypass surgery, how many miles of vessels are they affecting? Or let me say how many inches? Or maybe how many millimeters? I mean, to get, to get rid of the, the big main event is, is, is a very necessary thing. But what about the rest of the microvasculature? It really... When, you, when you're talking about health and aging, what you're really talking about is increasing the microvasculature because that's where all the action is. That's where the capillary exchange occurs, right? It isn't in the aorta. But if, I mean, if you have a blocked aorta, you're in trouble. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But, but the, the real, the, where the rubber meets the road is the microvasculature. So um, what we use, there, there's, there's a list here of things that will increase ni nitric oxide. And nitric oxide now is the new molecule of life, right? So nitric oxide, and, and nitric oxide, we have 60,000 miles of blood vessels, 18,000 miles of which are capillaries. Uh, magnesium orotate uh, raises ATP levels. Magnesium L3 and 8 um, will cross the blood-brain barrier. It's the only magnesium that will, that will cross the blood-brain barrier. It's very effective. I take three a day. Uh, my regimen is ridiculous. Um, L-arginine will, will boost nitric oxide, but if you're over 40, you need to be on L-citrulline. Um, nitrous oxide, nitric oxide has a three-second half-life. Hello? I mean, <laughs> three seconds. So you need to be replenishing this all the time. And so for boosting nitric oxide, I learned this from uh, Dr. Steven Sinatra. I had lunch with him one day at a meeting, and he put me on his website. And I said, so doc, what, what magnesium do you use? And he goes, I use orotate because it increases ATP. And I said, well, what about magnesium L3 and 8? And he said, I've never heard of it. I go, really? You've never heard of it? I mean, I'm telling you something that you've never heard of? So that was kind of an aha moment. And so he said, no, I, I've never heard of that. But, but I said, well, that, that's a new one, and it crosses the blood-brain barrier. It's the only one that I know. But there's a lot of different kinds. And then for constipation, what do you do? I mean, how many people are constipated? Give them magnesium. Give them minerals. Give them trace minerals. Magnesium malate, magnesium citrate. They'll, they'll be, you know, <laughs> not, not able to leave the bathroom. Okay. Nutrients to increase your blood flow. Nitrous, nit, nitric oxide leads to vasodilation via an increase in GMPC. So here are some other things that you can use to drive up nitric oxide. But this is a big deal, especially as you're getting... Uh, up there in the, in the age. And this comes from the Journal of Health and Longevity, Volume 1, um, Vasodrive ATP called Redwood. Transverse veritrol activates CERT1 and CERT2. And that regulates metabolism, the stress re response, and aging. It also inhibits cancer. Grapeseed extract and garlic and, and uh, R ALA. Alpha, that stands for alpha lipoic acid. It has to be the R form. Nu uh, nutraceutical mitochondrial support. Here's, here's a whole bunch of things. PQQ turns out to be a superstar. We, we uh, talk about PQQ and iodine a lot in our office. And uh, what increases voltage? How are we doing on time? Can, can I ask? Oh, great, great. Okay, we're going to get through this. Okay. So what increases voltage? If, 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 if decreased voltage is the problem, what increases voltage? Got it, 15 minutes. Okay, proper hydration, unrefined salt, minerals and electrolytes, electron donation, antioxidants, iodine and PQQ. Man, if you're not on iodine and your family and your kids are not on iodine, you, you're making a big mistake. You need to be on iodine. Iodine is anti-cancer, and you need to be on PQQ. They've done studies. Um, according, there, There's three iodine gurus in the country that I consider. And one is David Brownstein in Michigan. Jorge Fleckes in, in uh, uh, North Carolina, and Guy Abraham. And, and they all say that iodine is a, is a key nutrient. I mean, it isn't a supplement. It's a key nutrient. You need to be on it. Um, and PQQ is a, is, a, is a new... PQQ is a lot like coenzyme Q10. But they've done studies now for years. It's kind of a newly uh, hip and modern 
uh, type nutrient, but it's been known for, for a while, and they've been do doing quite a few studies on it. And what, there's, what, what I heard Jorge Fleckes say is that pregnant moms who are on iodine at about 25 milligrams QD per day and PQQ at about 20 milligrams per day end up having brilliant children, and they end up having pretty easy uh, uh, births, birthing procedures also. So cholesterol increases voltage. So that's why you don't want to cut your cholesterol down to 110 like some physicians do. Earthing, walking around barefoot. And I, these people that are on the beach and they're walking around in their tennis shoes drives me nuts. I just want to stop and say, take your tennis shoes off. But, you know, one of the best places to get voltage is walk along the beach. It's all salt water. Uh, increasing alkalinity or pH through your proper diet. You need some acidity, but you don't need very much, 20% to 80%. Raw milk, butter, and eggs, 10%. If, if, if this makes you nauseated, it means your liver is not making enough bile to absorb the fat. And increasing oxygenation, proper breathing. Okay, here's a big deal. And, and uh, Allison gave a talk, I think, yesterday on proper breathing airway, and I hope some of you attended it. And she works in our office, and she's, she's great at that. So Wim Hof and Buteyko breathing techniques, the, these are guys, people that, that learn these techniques are going, are... are ascending Mount Everest in the death zone without oxygen tanks because they know how to breathe. They know how to control their carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is the key, and when carbon dioxide uh, in, is bound up and, uh, and you don't get enough oxygen to your cells, what, what happens is, I mean, that's the mechanism for, for breathing. And so when your body is void of carbon dioxide, it'll, it'll borrow minerals from the bone bank and from, and from your bones. You deposit it in the blood to raise the alkalinity. So, so that's one of the aspects of, of decay. Uh, increasing parasympathetic nervous system activity, the eat, sleep, and heal system, that's huge. What about salt? Unrefined sea salt increases voltage, decreases blood pressure, decreases AFib, decreases fatigue. You're kidding. I thought salt was bad. Well, refined salt is bad because it's just sodium chloride and you get too much sodium and the, and the chloride well that's it sodium chloride will decrease voltage increase blood pressure increase afib and increase fatigue so uh, plus um salt it, you know um unrefined salt contains over 80 trace minerals and there's a number of kinds and redmond sea salt's one increase your mineral levels okay we talked about the car battery same thing in your battery in your, in your body. Minerals are needed to make serotonin. Minerals increase your membrane voltage. And if your membrane voltage is not 20 milli, millivolts to 25 millivolts, nothing's getting through, gang. And so all that ends up into the extracellular matrix. And it ends up becoming toxic. So um, minerals also act as on and off switches, especially calcium and magnesium. Calcium contracts the muscle. Magnesium releases it. If electrolytes are unbalanced, you get stuck in the on or the off position, that whole cramp that you get at night. Now, that's, that's the stuck position. So, um, and then my partner and I, Joe, have come up with a new, uh, we're working on a new uh, probiotic. It's, we're not making the probiotic. We're, we're assembling M18 and S, uh, K, SK12, Streptococcus salivaries K12, and Streptococcus salivaries M18, and I talked to the M18 rep, and I said, can you change that name? Sounds a little bit like a Honduran hit gang, you know. But he said, no, nope, it's, it's, it's named Bliss M18. I said, okay. But they won't let us put the two of them together. And so for upper respiratory and for intraoral probiotics, this, this will decrease coughs, decrease infections, decrease ear, ear infections, decrease decay, and increase the probiotics that are necessary in, in, the, in the oral microbiome which I think is a big deal. So we started this little company, and we'll let you know about the... Uh, we also have Lactobacillus ruteri and Salivarius and Paracasey in there also. So... Uh, <laughs> I saw this sticker on the back of a car, and it said, some mornings I wake up grumpy, and other mornings I let her sleep in. But my, my wife said, if you put that on there, Tom, you're going you're gonna to make a lot of the women mad. So I said, okay, so I let her change it. So OSA, obstructive sleep apnea causes oxygen deprivation. Now, we heard a pretty good case 
yesterday that it's about paralyzation and not so much oxygen deprivation, but I, I think it's both, and I think Dr. Stasha said it was, it was both, but she was concentrating more on the, on the paralysis uh, part of the um, sleep deprivation. You must get seven, eight hours, we all know this, but so many of us are not doing it, and even our kids aren't sleeping well. Um, there, is a, there is a SNP. If you do a SNP test, and I'm going to tell you about a, a really cool SNP test that, that you all should know about, there is a GAD SNP, glutamic acid decarboxylase, that if you, if you have this SNP, you cannot convert glutamic acid to GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. And that's one of the things you need for your, for your sleeping at night. Uh, when I was going through the A4M conferences, the, he said, remember it this way, GABA is your James Taylor hormone, and glutamine is your Jimi Hendrix horm hormone or neurotransmitter. I got, I've never forgotten that. So glutamine, uh, <laughs> anyway. So, uh, but, but check, if you, if you do a SNP test, make sure you check for a GAD SNP if you're not sleeping, because that, that could be a serious problem. And I just learned that a couple of months ago. Uh, in, but you, you have to involve an, a, a medical physician to do the polysomnograph and get the hypopnea index. In our office, if, if we have a hypopnea index of between 0 and 15, we're making them a sleep apnea appliance every time. If we're between 15 and 30, yeah, it's, maybe, it's probably a sleep apnea appliance or it could be CPAP. But statistically, people wear CPAPs for about five months and that's about it. They, they can't wear them and, and, if they, and their, their spouses can't handle them either. So, but you can, you can do, you can do uh, CPAP and uh, mandibular reposition appliances at the same time. So, there's the, there's the number if you want to do a watch PAT. Uh, I, stole, I, I told Dr. Liao that I, I stole a, a slide from him, but I, I said, but I did give you credit. So there it is. Impaired mouth syndrome, this is a huge deal. And this has to do with, again, remember, oxygenation, voltage, so you can tell your patients. If, the, if your kid is looking like this, when you walk in on them, we tell our patients, and the, and the hygiene department says, check on your kids. Look, just look in on them at night. Because if they're, if they're sleeping with their mouth wide open, lots of bad things are happening. And you guys, we don't have to go into all that. Um, but the airway must not be constricted or collapsed. We check arch with an, an arch length. In our office, we do functional expansion orthodontics. And there's a lot of ways you can go with that. There's the DNA appliance. We use some of the old Schwartz plates and, and Rickinators and, and all those. But they work. I mean, they, they work, if, as long as the patients and the kids are compliant. OK. So mouth breathing is associated with congested sinuses and decreased nitric oxide output in the, si in the nasal sinuses. Don't forget that. That's really important. OK, I'm going to cruise through. Here's the benefits of nasal breathing, just so you know that we have these. I've got five minutes left. What is a functional orthodontic situation? Why, uh, what, what do they accomplish? Functional orthodontics uh, accomplishes wider airway space, OSA prevention, more O2, best TMD condylar replacement. That's in the Gelb 4-7 position. Better speech and tongue placement. And so on, the, on this, this here's, a, here's a jaw that's been expanded. And it's a, when you do a slow, we do slow palatal expansion. You can't do rapid palatal expansion because it relapses. You've got to get enough bone growth in that, in that mid-palatal mid suture in order for it to, uh, to expand and, and, and for it to become uh, re retentive. So here's what, here's what our appliances kind of look like. We do this. Here are some functional orthodontic conditions. Heart rate variability. I want to get to a couple slides here. Heart rate breathing and... and heart, heart rate variability is just a measure of parasympathetic control. And so if you and we're all, let's face it, we're all in sympathetic overdrive. We're all stressed to the max. So the way to, to, the way to uh, combat that is through breathing techniques, Wim Hof and, and Buteco breathing, and, and shift yourself from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic nervous system. Oh, here's, a, here's something you ought to know. A low heart rate variability is related to a malocclusion. I didn't know that until about a year ago. And that means that the, and when, you, when you have a bad bite and when you have low HRV, that means that your, your, central, your sympathetic nervous system is spiking. Nutrition and dental decay, we're going to go through that. Oral microbiome. Here's what we give our patients, steps to alkalinize. Here's our new line. Here's, we've got a couple new products. 
Go back one slide. Sure. Okay. You ready? One more. Okay. Let's see how we're doing here. Which cancer nutrients do I recommend? All these. Okay, here's what I want to say. There are, the Life Extension Magazine just ran a, ran a uh, article and a study, and they found out that there's an increase in all-cause cancer, okay? All-cause cancer rates go up with the deficiency of three different nutrients, and they are iodine, magnesium, and, let's see, what are they? <laughs> Iodine, okay, I, I'm sorry, iodine, selenium, I, the, iodine, selenium, and uh, vitamin D3. So iodine, 25 milligrams, QD, and, uh, and we, with that we, we throw in PQQ, triple selenium, 800 micrograms, and selenium has to be taken with iodine, and then vitamin D3. And, and I'm telling you, I don't know how much you're taking, but I can guarantee you it's not enough. You've got to get those levels and those numbers up to 80 to 100. Okay, iodine, the most misunderstood nutrient. This is the one I want to... Do I have enough time to just go through this one? No, I don't. Okay, we'll take a picture of this one then. Sorry. And thank you all for uh, letting me speak. Let's give him a...